Niti and Dharma. The subject of today's discourse is Niti and Dharma. Niti. What is Niti? Shemarte Nayanam Ityarte Niti. The word Niti has been derived from the root verb Ni and the suffix Kim. It means that which has the capability to lead. But to lead where? To where? The definition is Shemarte Nayanam Ityarte Niti. <coughs> Nayana means to lead. As for instance, the organ of the body which leads people toward external objects. <coughs> the eye is called Nayana. The Niti is that which leads a unit being towards Kshema. And what is Kshema? There are a number of words that seem to have the same meaning as Kshema. But there is some subtle difference among the various words. For instance, there is a word Hita whose colloquial meaning is good but which actually means that desire for physical, mental and spiritual progress. But since no real progress is feasible in either the physical or the intellectual realm, the word Hita has no meaning. Another word is Shuba. It is used for progress in the intellectual and spiritual realms. But since there cannot be any progress in the intellectual realms, this term also becomes meaningless. And as regards spiritual progress, there are two words, Kalyana and Kshema. Kalyana Mastu means let there be spiritual progress. And Kshema means the same as Kalyana. So Kshemarte Nayanam Ityarte Niti, that is, that which leads you in a particular direction for your Kshema is called Niti. That which teaches you how to thieve, how to rob, and how to take bribes is not Niti, for there is no intention of Kshema there. This is the definition of Niti as in the scriptures. In common speech, niti means simply that which leads, or the entity which possesses the capability of leading. So in common speech, we can use terms such as viniti, durniti, suniti, satniti, rana, niti, etc. But in a spiritual context, the words suniti, niti, conducive to welfare, and kuniti, niti, conducive to harm, cannot be used, since the word niti means only Shemarte Nayanam Ityarte, that is to say, since Niti is automatically conducive to welfare and can never be harmful. <coughs> the word morality is generally used as the English synonym for Niti. Niti as scripturally defined. Morality is that effort or idea which keeps a person away from sin. Sin being that which is not prescribed in the Bible. Niti is different from morality. There is no exact synonymy for Niti. Papa and Punya. Another thing to bear in mind is that sin in the English language is not the Papa of Sanskrit. As already said, sin means to go against that prescribed in the Bible. But Papa is explained in the phrase Paro Pakaraha Punyaya Papaya Para Piranam. That is any action by one individual which leads to the development of others is punya, virtuous deeds, and any action which does the opposite is papa. Bhagavan Shankaracharya has said, Tyaya Duryana Samsaryam Bhadya Sadusa Maganmam Kuru Punya Mahoratram Smaranitya Manityatam Avoid association with the wicked and associate with the virtuous. Do good 24 hours a day and remember the eternal. Tyaja Duryana Samsargam. Avoid association with the Duryana, wicked. Who are Duryana? Those who bring about the spiritual degeneration of others are Duryana. But Duryana is also a relative term. A particular individual may be wicked for one person, i.e., the cause of that person's degeneration, yet may not be wicked for another person. <coughs> in a unit there are both righteous and unrighteousness. Suppose that in one person the righteousness is 20% and the unrighteousness is 15%. The resultant 5% will be righteousness. But if in another person the righteousness be 10% and the unrighteousness 2%, then the resultant 8% will be that person's righteousness, which means that the person turns out to be a greater moralist. 
though he or she is possessed only of only 10% righteousness. What counts is the resultant quantity of righteousness, not the righteousness in itself. Now suppose that in Mr. X the resultant unrighteousness is 15%, and Mr. Y it is 10%. If a third man possessing less than 10% resultant righteousness comes in contact with them, he will become degenerated. But if in this man the righteousness is 25%, he cannot become unrighteous in contact with X and Y. On the contrary, he will make those two righteous. Therefore, one person cannot be duriana for all other persons. A person may be duriana for those who possess less of righteousness than he or she does of unrighteousness. But the same person cannot be duriana for those who possesses more of righteousness than he or she does of unrighteousness. Rather, the latter persons will make the former person good. If, when making an effort to reform a person, your righteousness is not much more than the unrighteousness in that person, you should take with you a few other moralists when you go to reform the person. The collective righteousness will gain in strength, and it will have its impact on the person, and the person will be reformed. The person could be reformed not by the influence of one good person, but by that of an assemblance, assemblage of good people. So Tyaya Duryana Sam Sargam Badya Sadhu Sam Gamam. And what is the meaning of the word sadhu in the shloka? Really sadhu means those by whose contact others become good. One does not become a sadhu simply by wearing a saffron dress. Those who have the capability of leading others towards sadhuta, saintliness, are alone sadhus. One may be a sadhu even wearing a suit. So one should associate with sadhus. Then gu, guru punyama oratram, that is, do punya to others all day long and all night long. What is punya? Paru pakaraha punyaya. Any action by one person which leads to the development of others is punya. The real service is the service that you render to others for their spiritual upliftment. And that is known as vipu, Viprushita Seva. But other services, such as Shudrusita Seva, fiscal service, Vaishusita Seva, economic service, and Kshatriusita Seva, martial service, help you in rendering Viprushita Seva to others. When someone is dying of some ailment, we cannot preach spiritual gospels to the person. Rather, you should help that person with medicines and physical services. Then when the person <coughs> gets well, you should teach something spiritual to him or her. Then the person will have been permanently benefited. Hence, Kuru Punyama Ahoratram. What is the Ahoratra? The Ahoratra means the time stretching from one sunrise to the next. The time from one sunrise rise to the sunset is called Adinama, and the time from that sunset to the next sunrise is called a Ratrimana. The Dinamana combined with the Ratrimana is called the Aho Ratra. The European system of time measurement starts from 12 in the night, whereas the Indian system starts from sunrise. In the Indian system, the date changes with the rise of the sun. So do Punya. Ahoratra all day long and all night long. Here some may ask how it is possible to do punya while sleeping. Let me explain it to you. Among all punya karmas, virtuous actions, the best is the performance of prashara, spiritual propagation. Prashara can be done only by those who themselves are spiritual aspirants. Doing sadhana and rendering social service are also punya karmas. But for ordinary people, who work in government offices or in businesses, not very spiritual activities, what is the way out? Even while working in the world, they should take their worldly work to be the work of the Lord. The worldly work as well will then become a punya karma. If they keep their minds engaged in the thought of the Supreme, they will not be able to do anything wrong. The feeling of rendering service to others will remain in their minds and what about during sleep? 
before sleeping, take his name. Sleep too will become a punya karma. In Under the Shelter of the Guru in Yoga Psychology 1994, the author explains how Ajapa Japa and Adhyana Dhyana can go on during sleep. That is why it is said, Kuru Punyama Horatram. Then Smara Nitya Manityatam. Nityam means always. Remember always the transitory nature of things. Anityatam means the ephemeral, the transitory, that which was in the past is in the present and will continue to be in the future is nitya. If even one of these three aspects of time be absent, the thing is not nitya. For example, that which is in the present and will continue to be in the future, but was not in the past, is not nitya but anitya. From among be beginning, middle and end, if even one is not there, then that is not nitya. A thing which was born will die one day. That which is unborn will not die. That which comes within the scope of the spatial, temporal and personal factors will alone be born and die. But that which is beyond these three and is the base of them all will neither be born nor die. That alone is nitya. This physical universe is anitya because it was born. It will die one day. That which is in the universe is anitya. And that which contains the universe is Nitya. Hence this world is transitory. It was born one day and it will surely die. A person who keeps this always in mind using the discerning Nitya Nitya faculty, Nitya Nitya Viveka, will not commit any wrong deed, since the time of your sadakas have light cremation grounds or their sadhana, because the final end of the human body is most vividly manifested there. So one will tend not to perform any work improperly, and one's mind will not be attached to crudity.